time of a minute not to say Tachlan a week to the week of Shuas. Like the week you have, you know, and the question is, well, what is that, what's that minute based on? Like we know usually Isuchag, the day after a holiday, what's the custom that some shuls have, including here, of not saying Tachlan for a whole week? So, the Mepharshim point out, there's a discussion, what, there's a yant of a shvuas, of shvuas, which is one day, I mean, we keep two days here, because the chutzvah is, but really shvuas is only one day. We found the spot. And to kick up two other guys. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a yant of a shvuas of a week. A yant of a shvuas of a day we know, we keep shvuas for a day, and we just keep an extra day here. But we had shuas for a week, so they used to make, during the time when the base of Mikdash was up, that a week to make up for the carbon. If they didn't bring the, if they didn't bring the appropriate carbon on shuas, that a week to make it up. So that's the carbon of the day. So the, the yant of the day is for one, it's a malacha. We don't do malacha for one day of shuas. And the week is makeup. If you didn't bring a carbon in the appropriate time, you have the whole week. So, it's, so since the question is, since today we don't have a base on mikdash, and we don't have a carbon, so is there like such concept as a tashlumin? Because, in other words, because in, because in fact that's a discussion. We know there's a question with Man Hazer, whether Svir Saoma is the rice of the Rabbanan, whether Svir is biblical or rabbinical. That's it. When we count Svir, when we counted Svir tonight, did we get a mitzvah in the Torah or a mitzvah in the Rabbanan? A major discussion. We assume Hash is only the Rabbanan, but that's a Machok is Rambam and others whether Svir is the rice or not. So, what's the issue at hand? What seems to be the issue? Whether you say Sphere is home is the Raisa, is Manazir. Clearly, at one point in Jewish history, dollar store? Tic Tac. No. I heard they have them in the dollar store someone told me. I wouldn't buy anything. Well, what, about the, uh, what about the expiry of three days? Most of the times it's not dangerous. It stuff has a half, half life of. Uh, Plutonium. I'm not too worried. Oh, so that means you would get it in the dollar store. No, I don't. Dollar store has counterfeit products sometimes. I'd Dangerous? Could be. There was in the news about dog treats. People buying dog treats from the dollar store. Dogs were getting sick. That's crazy. Hope you're getting you that down. should edit this out. Hope you're getting that down, not to get dog food in, the, hope edit this in out. the dollar store. So either way, it's a machokas where the sphere is the rice or the rabbana. Someone's talking dollarama. So the question is, what is the issue? The first hint, the issue is that at one point everyone agreed Svira was the Raisa, it's a Pasuk in the Chumash. So why would someone say it's not the Raisa today? So the issue is we know there's a Mitzvah of Svira to Omer, and there's a Mitzvah of Karban Omer. There's a Mitzvah of counting, and there's a Mitzvah of bringing the Karban. So the question, uh, and they both happen to be on the same day. The second day is Shavuot, the second day of Pesach. So the question is, is it this coincidental that they both happen to be on the same day? We just learned this man, are they inherently connected? So if you hold that it's connected, so if we don't have a carbon omer today, the so sphere is omer can't be the rice either, it can only be drabana because we don't have the carbon omer. If you hold sphere and the carbon are two different mitzvahs, so even though you don't have the carbon omer, you could still say the mitzvah of Svira is the Raisa today. So that's how many explain the issue. But if it's the Raisa today, it seems to be an independent mitzvah. If it's connected, so it only be Drabanan. Unfortunately, you can't give this shot in the Rambam because the Rambam holds it's the Raisa, but we always can bring a geographical proof in the Rambam. What do you mean, geog you ever took geography? So it's going to be a ge geographical proof. From where the Rambam puts it, in which in Hilchah's blank, we can figure out what the nature of the halach is. So in other words, where, if you were writing the sphere to Omer, 
If you're writing the halachas, where would you put Hilchot Sfirah to Omer? On the what? Under which category? Hilchot what? Where would it, what would make sense to put it next to what? So I know what you're thinking. I'll help you out. Either you'd put it in Hilchot Tefillah to reduce Sfirah to Omer and Davening, so that would be a logical place. Hilchot Pesach, we start. So there are many places it could be. Yet yeah, where is it? In Hilchot Karbanos, the Rambam puts it with the laws of Tamidim and Musafim. So clearly, the Rambam is telling me there's a link between the mitzvah of Svir to Omer and the Karban Omer, and yet he still says it's the right says, How could that be? You understand, if you hold it's biblical, so you hold it's an independent mitzvah. If you hold it's rabbinical, it's connected to the Karban Omer. How could the Rambam be pushing and pulling at the same time? How can he say it's the Raisa at the same time say it's linked? So there's a famous piece from Rav Chaim Salavechik from the Salavechik that's Rav, the Rav Salavechik's grandfather I listened to a shir of his last week Who, Rav Chaim Salavechik? Yeah Which one? The, oh, the one that was here not the Chaim Salavechik I'm talking I about I was before my time, I don't know but I listened to a Chaim Salavechik. Yeah, but, was, but you saw a picture? Yeah, let's see if I can find it for you. What was the topic, Shemitah? No, I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> it was that. It was good. It was, it was good that fun. deep. Yeah. You mean you, you mean you had the recording on you mean while you are in the room, you mean? <laughs> Is that what you mean by we listened to this year? Or you were biking, or what happened? Yeah, second from the bottom. Yeah, that's not the one I'm quoting. Okay. I said watering the garden in Shemitah. Yeah. That's my Chavrusa, oh. my good friend. Actually, he was the one who was in Hamilton for many years. Uh-huh. We were Chavrusas in um, YU, in the Yadin Yadin Kolel, and his father is the great, was the great, or is the great. He's no longer alive, but right. people still learn his Svarim, so he's alive. Of Aaron Salavechik. That was the when Rabbi. When Rabbi Mordechai Green talks about his Rebbe, the Rav, Rav Aaron Talvashik is, is the Rav's brother. So that's who he is. He's the, so he was in Hamilton for many years. So could you, could you garden, so could you water your garden in Shemitah? It's a rhetorical question, don't worry. So, so therefore, how could, um, how could the Rambam say both? So it's very fitting as, um, Yom Yushalayim is coming up this Wednesday night. So there's a whole discussion about the sanctity of the temple. So clearly when the temple was up, it had Kedusha, it had sanctity. What about Bizman Hazer or, you know, even post 1967, we have Yushalayim, hopefully we don't have the temple. We don't have the temple up. So the question is, is the sanctity of the temple does that remain today, or is it no longer with us? That since do we say that since the base of Mikdash is destroyed, of course it's still a special. No one says it's nothing. Everyone agrees it's a special place, but does it have the special sanctity? So that's a dispute in the Talmud, a dispute in the Rishon and the Rambam's opinion is, and the way we paskin, that the kedushas Hamikdash remains. The sanctity on the temple now remains even today, even though there is no temple. Because Makriv and Alpha Pisha we follow the opinion in theory, one could bring sacrifices even without a temple up. So therefore, according to the Rambam, there is sanctity today, but for technical reasons, we can't bring a carbon. Let's say we don't, the Kohana Matame, we don't have the big day kahuna, and a list of other reasons. That's a separate chair. Why, if in, if, if in theory we can bring carbonas, why don't we? But, you know, issues of Tuma, Tuma's Kohanim, Mokham HaMizbeach, etc. For, for technical reasons, we can no longer bring carbonas today. In fact, it could have been in, after Bayesheni, they were bringing the carbon Pesach for a little bit afterwards. The Pesach Sheni, actually it could be the, one of the easier the carbon Pesach is one of the easier ones because it says 
that um, you don't need a reach, you know, it's not something that needs a reach nicholach, etc. But either way, the bottom line is, according to the Rambam in theory, one could bring a carbon to it. So the question is, so how does that help us? So, he, so Rav Chaim says like this, during the time the temple was up, so how did it work? They counted spheres Omer at night, they counted spheres the first night, and they brought the carbon Omer the next morning. They brought the carbon Omer in the morning. So we see clearly counting Sphira wasn't dependent on the physical bringing of the carbon. Right? How do we know that? Because even when the Beit HaMikdash was up, they counted the night before. They counted the night before with the understanding they were going to bring the carbon the next morning. So that's what Rav Chaim says today. That's the Rambam Shita. The Rambam holds Svir Tomer is the rice even today. Ah, what do you mean the rice? Uh, he connects it to the Karban Omer. He puts it in Hilchus Karbanas. And we know we don't bring Karbanas today, so how could it still be the rice? So the Rambam says no. When I count Svira tonight, or the first night of Pesach, second night of Pesach, but the first night of Svira, I'm counting, and I, and I plan on bringing the carbon over the next morning. When I get to the next morning, there are technical problems that don't permit me, but potentially, I, there, is, there is sanctity in the temple, and I can bring a carbon. It's only a mere technical reason I'm not giving. So therefore, when I count Svira, in theory, I plan on bringing the carbon. So it's no different than it was this man based on Mikdash. Because let's say someone counted, let's say when the temple was up, someone counted Sphira. And for some reason, they couldn't bring the carbon home in the next morning. Would anyone say Sphira's home wasn't the Raisa? Of course not. You counted Sphira with the. Could, with in mind that you're going to bring the carbon home here. If practically you don't bring it, so what? Not so what, but as long as you have a good reason. So if something came up, you couldn't bring it then, and something comes up all the time now. Many technical reasons why we can't bring it. And therefore, that's how he explains the Rambam. That the Rambam's opinion is that Svir Sohomer is the rice even today. So we have a, so we have a middle opinion. We have Rabbi Yerucham, who says, today counting days is biblical, but counting weeks is rabbinical. That's also based on the, but what, but, so how does that help us? So that's what some explain, that's how I began. Some have a minute during the week of, after Shavuot, not to say Tachanan. So why? Because we have a holiday of Shavuot biblically. Biblically, we have a holiday of Shavuot one day, and we have a holiday of Shavuot for a week of not bringing our carbon. So that's what, that's the, the distinction Rabbi Yerucham said. He says, Svir Tzom, accounting days is separate. We have that. We have the biblical holiday today. Therefore, counting days is still... We have the one day of Shavuos, so counting days is still biblical. I count my 50, so I'm 50. But counting weeks is only rabbinical so the, because we don't bring the carbon omer. And therefore, it should come out that the whole concept should make any sense today of keeping Shuas for a week, that we don't have a carbon omer, the sum should be tashum, and that's why most have a minute to say it. it makes more sense to you one should say tachanun. However, some you know you'll follow the minig of Yeshua, but the minig of the minig of not saying tachanun made sense when when you his mom and you bring karbanos. So the whole week was a time of tashum, but it's difficult to say today that we only have a yantiv of shuas one day. We don't have a yant of Ashur's seven days. It's, diff- it's a difficult minog um, not to say Tachanan for a whole week, but, you know, whatever your minog is in the shul, you'll continue to follow. The Ramah quotes a famous minog. The, the famous minog the Ramah quotes is to eat dairy on Shavuos. The Ramah actually says, the Yom Rishon. He says on the first day of Shavuot, so I'm not sure if those who have dairy, the minig is dafka yom echad, but that's the Lashon Harama, is yom rishon. So what is the reason behind the minig of eating dairy? So the Rama himself gives a reason, probably not the, not that well-known reason, but the Rama writes, it's zeicher to the shtei halechem. In other words, 
Uh, the Shtei Lechem is the carbon they brought, the two showbreads. So we know there's a halacha in Kilchas Kashris, Yeridea, about, for the Sepasik and the Chumas, Lo Shavash Yogadi Bachalavimo, to separate milk and meat. And the Chachama made many gzeras in order to prevent eating milk and meat. And one is that if you cut challah or bread with a meat knife, you shouldn't use it. You shouldn't have that slice of bread with dairy. In other words, the classic case is leftover challah. You cut up a lot of challah on Shabbos, and you have leftover pieces, so Sunday morning you want to make French toast. So I have a bagel and lox and cream cheese sandwich. So the, so the lox is really you cannot. You cannot use slices of bread in order to in order to make French toast or put cream cheese on. But Moshe has a kula about the half of the loaf that you didn't cut, so that you could be leaning on. But So the Rama wanted to create a situation where you need two types of bread. First have milk, then have meat. So he wanted a situation where you have two breads to lezecha yishtei halacha. That's the reason of the Rama. Probably the most famous reason is the Mishnabura quotes that even though we have lots of kashras for, for, we have a dairy kitchen, we have a meat kitchen, but to, if you open up Yeridea and if you, if you keep a kosher kitchen, you see that there are a lot more things going on with meat. We don't see it so much today. But it's more before to prepare the animal, going to the shechita, salting, the dikas for the trefers, etc. There's a lot going on there. So, Kodama and Torah, there was no mitzvah of kashras. They ate what they wanted. So the pots and everything were treif and all that. So once the Torah was given, so they had to make a meal right away, so it was much easier to go with dairy. Keep it simple. They had a dairy meal right after until they became more acquainted with the laws of kashras. So the Mishnah Ruvim is a very pragmatic reason back during the Jews in Har Sinai the Ramah brings the reason based on the Karbanas, the Shtei HaLechem. The Mishnah Brewer brings a minute back based on what actually happened in real life to the people on Har Sinai. There's another approach, the Magan Avram quotes in the Zohar, that we have seven weeks, even though it's a Tishbru Hamishim Yom, but the Rush writes, we round it off, we keep 49 days, 7 times 7. So 7, we have by uh, Isha Nida counting Zayin Akiyam, 7 clean days, and then you know, then you go to the mikvah. So basically, your w- woman's tummy, she counts the 7 clean days, and then she goes to the mikvah, become tar. So to Har Sinai, the Jews reached the Mem test. Shari Tuma in Mitzrayim. So you need the seven weeks to, so to speak, count the Shiva and the Kiyim in order to, in order to become pure. In fact, and that's what the Zohar writes. We have what the Gemara tells us, Dam Yaakov and Asachol, whatever it means exactly. But the blood in the woman turned, the Dam Nida turns into milk. In other words, a nursing woman, she does so she doesn't get any period. She the blood that was supposed to come out turns into milk and she breastfeeds the child. So we see milk represents tahara, the removal of tuma. So too, so that's what Erezabas Chalav So, so to the minute we just became sure in Harsinai, so therefore milk is a symbol, white is a symbol of purity. Another approach is from the Yeshua's Yaakov and others, that they point out that also along the lines of the Zohar, but they make a different message, Dam Nekar that the blood turns into milk. So milk represents the ability to um, take something which is tummy and make it tar. It starts off as Dam and it's Nefach to milk. That's the Koach HaTorah. We know the Tosis, the Gemara talks about honey. 
the power of honey, honey has the power to transform. That's why, even though the child was, how could you, what about the legs and the bees? How could you eat that? So others to some reason are right because it's, no, not, it's not no same time. But Rabbeinu Yonah writes, no, because honey has the power to transform, so therefore it could take something non-kosher and make it kosher. We're not worried if someone puts non-kosher into the honey. Because honey, uh, and, but as Rav um, Yashav pointed out, Torah is compared to honey, but Torah is even greater than honey. Because honey only transforms on pieces, but if it's a barrier, it can change. However, Torah has the power to change anybody. About, you know, someone could go from Tuma to Tara to become a Baal Tshuva. And therefore, that's the concept here. The Adam Nechav and Nesachalav, the power to, we have the power to change. That, and that's the famous um, statement, you know, Rav Yossi. Rav Yossi, and again, in the, in the Gemara of Sachim, if not for the Torah, I'd be any other Joe in the Shuk. The Torah changes me, transforms me. And, and it's similar, you know, similar but different approaches to Beis HaLevi. He points out we need the example of, you know, milk and meat is because the Torah, the angels wanted the Torah and Avram went up, Moshe went up. What, is, what are they doing here? And why are you giving them the Torah? Why not us? So they said, what about kosher, what about this mitzvah? They can't do the mitzvahs. So they can't, they can't eat. They can't have... So therefore... Therefore, like the Gemara says, also the same Gemara in Pesachim about even Rabbi Lezer is mold When it comes to Shavuos, everybody agrees you need Lachem. You have to eat because so we see the fact that the Torah is not given to angels. It's given to human beings, and therefore we have. They could, um, we have, you know. So we have the minug, and then we have meat, and we have to work out, you know, work out the issues through the Torah principles to see how we can do it. So that's how they explain, you know, some of the. You know, different minhagam of having dairy. Others point out there's a meaning of having honey, and for the same, the simple reason, you know, mitzukim kedvash, Torah is like sweet as honey, and as we explained also, honey has the ability to change, but Torah is even greater. The Torah could change, um, uh, could change a person fully, as the Rambam writes, but it's true, but true, but it's you become someone else, and that's why we have, you know, we have the principle of, you know, Bito, Bito Bashishim, Bito Barov. So as the Menei also points out, that that's the highest level when Treif falls, a little milk falls into the chicken soup and becomes kosher, that's the highest level that turns under which was once Usur and make it Mutter. That's the Koach HaTorah, the Koach HaTorah that we we're in Egypt 210 years, reached the lowest levels of Tuma, and then during the seven, we- seven weeks, seven weeks of Jamei Tara, we became Tar and were able to accept the Torah at Harsinah.